I think for me, one of the most exciting things about this conference and about being here with you is that we've brought together people from all these different sectors to talk about this question of openness, so that people from the government are listening to software developers, are listening to activists, listening to entrepreneurs, innovators. I just think that it's so great when we get cross cross-pollination from lots of different sectors. I've heard so many rich connections going on, and I think that's just another example of it. Right now, I'm going to bring to the stage our final speaker of the conference to really wrap it up, round it up, pull it together, and bring it home. So please come onto the stage, Michelle Williams. Hi, everybody. I'm just wanting to make sure that our tech is we're just trying to move fast because we don't want to keep you here late. So everybody should have received uh, a piece of paper that has uh, a Blitz template on it. And um, I also want you to have um, a little bit of paper for some exercises we're going to be doing. Um, I'm just wanting you to get that ready now so that we can just keep the flow going through this presentation. Okay, so when I was young, I remember flying down that hill. Just uh, it was at my in my backyard. There was a there was a driveway, and it was so steep, and there was construction going on, and I was swerving and I was turning, and it was an amazing experience. My parents were so worried about me. Don't go so fast, they'd scream, and but everybody around me um, loved the experience too. So. I spent, um, I was so excited to show them, to show them where to turn. Uh, and I just really felt like back at that time, I was a pioneer, interesting in showing people the way. And I like to think that that's what's happening for me now. So I'm Michelle Williams. I'm from Sydney. Um, I am, I, I, I would have loved to have you guys here. But I think that the fact you guys are around on the edges is really uh, telling of the times that we're in now. Um, we're not as centralized as we once were. We are distributed. Um, there is a lot of talk about power shifting to the edge. So I think that you're very powerful in being on the edge. And um, yeah, so thank you for having me here. So just to get started, I can't remember this off by heart, so I'm just going to um, get started. So uh, in Sydney um, and in Australia, we have a traditional um, like, uh, respect that we pay to our um, Indigenous people. Um, and I'd just like to pay respects to the Indigenous people of this area. I have, uh, I spoke to the uh, Maoris that were here yesterday, um, and so I'd just like to start by acknowledging them. In Sydney, um, we acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, but here in uh, Wellington, it's um, recognizing the Taranuki uh, Fanu people and paying respects to their elders, both past and present. So um, this is me. I've been to Wellington before, and um, I, I went and visited um, some of your beautiful mountains in Creech Hallett Pass. Um, and I also um, really love how amazing your um, stars and how many you can see. In Sydney, you can see about 10. Um, and <laughs> the other thing that this is a picture that I saw coming up from my local news, um, but as of yesterday. There was um, absolutely no clouds over New Zealand, and um, I've been told that this doesn't happen very often. So I'm um, very appreciative of how um, beautiful your land is. So the things that I want to cover today are about us versus them, the why of what we're doing here, and just new perspectives and new thinking. So writing this and, and thinking of the connection that uh, New Zealand and Australia have, I think that uh, when you look back at how we were first um, settled and developed, um, it was very much at a time where the Industrial Revolution and era was starting to take place in the UK. 
Um, their systems were um, at, at creaking point. Um, there was a lot of overcrowding in jails and they didn't know what to do with all the displaced people um, because of this shift. And so exploring happened. Um, they ventured to the other side of the world and they set up Australia and they obviously set up New Zealand as well. And I think what's really um, telling about this time now for us in this room is how interconnected we are. We are all explorers. I remember 10, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, how disconnected that I felt from the rest of the world. Ordering a CD from the US, it would take six weeks to get it here. Any news that we were wanting to get would take that long as well. And for us to learn and know and explore and build the stuff that we are doing now, it's really important that we appreciate and remember and how exciting a time that is that we're able to do that. So I think this is also happening at a time when we are in a massive state of change. Economically, um, yeah, I, I won't reflect on Australia's economic fund at the moment. Environmentally, we're seeing the changes. Politically, it's happening. Uh, globally, it's happening, but we're also so aware of it and so informed of it. I also like to reflect, so I'm, I'm really interested in the sociological changes that the internet is bringing. And from doing that, I have been looking in, uh, say, about the last 100 years and, and what um, the economic situation has been about. Sigmund Freud's nephew, who was very big in propaganda, um, also led this movement saying that if we can make the people think that, and that they never have enough or that they're never good enough, it would drive the economy. And that has led us to um, situations like this, which is um, such a, a picture of what's happening in America, in the UK, in Australia, in New Zealand, in every country in the world, who is also having a massive issue with obesity. Waste is a big issue. And the house prices. Now, in, this, in Sydney at the moment, we're having fun where 25% every three months is how much house prices are going up. Um, I, of course, am very aware that that's not sustainable, but I could sell my house now and triple my income. Um, and that, that is crazy. And I have been told in New Zealand you are um, experiencing higher than um, probably feasible housing issues. And how engaged are we? So we're all working in jobs. Now, I would say that many of you in, in this room have taken the steps and in doing stuff that you love and finding a way to, if you love coding and you love connected to community, you're taking that risk over just working in a job that um, you're, you're not happy with or isn't, you aren't, don't feel engaged with. And even still, you probably see the opportunity if you're not um, in that situation at the moment. But the majority of people are disengaged from their work. So what I wanted to talk about is seeing with fresh eyes. What I want you to do in the first thing, and this is really about grounding you and your frustrations and what's been coming up. I've heard a lot about fear. I've heard a lot about um, what's going on in the world. And I just want to give you a little bit of time now to write 10 things that have frustrated you, that, you've, that have come up, and or that you're feeling frustrated before you come to this conference. I'll give you about 30 seconds to do that. So I'm not expecting you to write all of them. I just want you to feel it and think about it. So my, my background and, and where I've come from has been uh, IT. I was uh, once a system integrator, um, project management, account management. So I've been connected to the tech community for a long time. And what I often see being talked about is this fact of we don't have these massive technological um, opportunities that um, humankind can marvel at as a whole, as a collective. Well, one of the things happened, and I'm sure all of you are seeing this, is what we are actually able to access individually and the amount of data that we're able to, to access. You know, um, we are creating more data every day now than we have from the beginning of hu humankind to 2003. That's astronomical. But one thing we need to remember is this thing about data pollution that's starting to come up uh, is the fact that industrial era factories pumped out all of this pollution and we didn't think twice about what the issue would be. But 
we are paying the penalties for that now, especially in places like China. And the same thing as far as um, our data pollution. And I think as far as schooling and education is concerned, I've loved seeing what Inspire was doing about innovating in education. This is an area that is full of opportunities for innovation because this system was created with, uh, in the same structure as the military. And it was very much about how you manage to, to um, train people to work in factories. And then we haven't, uh, we haven't evolved from that. So we are sitting in classrooms, being told and, and poured information into us that we remember and try and regurgitate. And by doing this, by having English, by having maths, by having science, we're creating all these silos. We're learning it from the very beginning. And these silos mean we're not talking to each other. Again, this worked for industrial era, but it doesn't for us now. And I, I think there's a lot of fear. And when I've talked about these changes that are going on in the world, I, um, I, I see fear in people's eyes because they don't understand it. Um, it, it was, you know, in Sydney we don't have earthquakes, um, but I heard it a lot here. And, um, you know, I, I've spoken to um, quite a few of you about how you manage and deal with this and, and how you prepare for it and how much fear that you actually have or um, how much you're just ready to um, take the precautions and um, be ready for it. And the other thing that I think is really happening, you've seen this very especially in the uh, political community. Um, in politics at the moment, it is very much about us versus them. When what we're having is um, this power being taken out from underneath people, especially the fact that we're all able to have a voice now. Um, we are aware of what our um, governments are doing. When the political systems were created, it was at a time when communication was expensive. So the only person who was able to make that decision and have that full view was the person at the very top. But that's not the case anymore. And so we are seeing this polarization when actually it's more about how is the power shifting and how are we to redefining what our values are and what we expect and um, what a progressive and conservative world looks like. There needs to be a balance of conservative and progressive, but it's not us versus them. So this guy you probably have seen before, and I, um, I just wanted to show you what he did. So I think that this is a really good example of what's happening now with somebody that's trying to... Um, he, he got in because he was able to sell that the other government wasn't good. And it's not that we, we want him in, that, that is just what's happened. And he's, um, the way that he expresses himself or is out in, in public, um, yeah, it's not, not um, very, very loved. Um, the situation with this is he just, just after the spill when they tried to get rid of him, um, he was down in Tasmania. And, they, and somebody said to him, this is um, like eating an apple. So he grabbed it and, and, and bit into an onion, a raw onion. And social media erupted with what the what's going on and then all the news erupted as well and um, you know he, scrutiny on himself is giving him so much pressure and he just seems to keep making more and more mistakes and I, I think it's just a really good example of um, you know are we is it about a leader or is it about um, what, what we want and who we are as a society and and what that transition is to, to recreating or rebooting that So the other work that I've been doing as well, um, I think when, when we did our industrial era and we did start exploring the world um, uh, in, and heading out, the world was uncharted. We had so much resources available to us and so much to explore. All our research is set up to do that. Um, all, of, all of the work that we do is about looking out to the world that we can go and, 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 and conquer, um, but just to, to develop and, and keep making us prosperous. And we, are, we do have a great standard of living. But I think now we're, we're flipping it back to looking at ourselves, to having a bit of a reflection and to having different perspectives. 
And um, we're seeing this in a lot of work in some of the universities that I'm doing MOOCs with um, that are they're talking about what this reflection of self is. So it brings me to my next, um, next exercise. And um, it is just about, I, I just want you to ground with uh, this conference here today. So um, mindfulness and meditation are coming up a lot. Um, I think it's um, because, especially of the pollution of um, the mind um, and starting to be aware and, and find the exercises that we can use to be present in the moment. So what I want you to all do is close your eyes and um, breathe into your nose and out through your mouth um, for five breaths and just think about yourself being grounded into the earth like the trunks of, of a tree. Okay, thanks guys. So I've got a few more questions for you to answer. You have some paper there already. I don't want you to spend all the time thinking about it, but what have you felt about being here at Open Source Open Society? And this doesn't mean all the gushy kind of emotions. It's just about you not analyzing it, but just listening to, to um, what reactions that you have. Say that every emotion that you experience in your life becomes a sensation on your body. So I just want you to notice that. We spend so much time in our heads. This is a time for you to just listen to yourself. So how do you, how do you feel about open society, open source? Next question is, who are the key people, speakers, attendees that you connected with while you were here? Who stood out to you? Who made you really angry? But also, who made you excited about the opportunities that you have? What key topics stood out to you? And I think most importantly, how does this align with you and your life as it is now and your vision for the future? How does what you experienced here and what made you excited align with what you're doing in your everyday life? So then I want to go into um, Muhammad Yunus. He um, is uh, one of the most well-known social entrepreneurs in the developing world. And he talks about burning eyes being the business eyes of the future. I've been involved in social innovation and tech entrepreneurship for quite a number of years. And I've seen the tech entrepreneurship space take off astronomically. Like the exponential growth curve has been amazing. Social innovation has plateaued. People want to make change but don't know how to integrate that with business models. And I think that's because a lot of the time we're applying the same, same thinking of um, creating these businesses for good and for impact with um, the old models. We are at a time of disruption and doing things different, differently. And, and being able to do this now when there is so much disruption is very exciting. The other thing that I like to explore is just about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. <clears throat> A lot of the self-actualization are principles that I've heard here at Open Source Open Society. Morality, creativity, problem solving, acceptance of facts, lack of prejudice, diversity. So we are at a time of this maturation of who we are in our interconnectedness and awareness. And moving from this ego system to ecosystem, so you're all distributed in this room at the moment. You're shared and open, hyper-collaboration, many-to-many, networked, interoperable. All values that we have in the open source, open society. And I think that we're, we're charting new territories here and um, it is an exciting time. And to see the values here being so aligned with this other um, work and thinking and how to connect the two is quite exciting. So um, I also am seeing a lot of talk about uh, automation and robots. 
the saying within the next 10, 15 years, um, something like 40 to 60% of the jobs that we have now could be automated. And that's a big issue if governments aren't preparing for that and aren't um, creating policies around that. But what I think is really happening is we're entering a, a massive era of creativity where we are disrupting these business models and creating new jobs, new opportunities. Everyone in this room today, you're all creating new businesses. I heard a lot of talk about value, um, but I think that at the moment, you're like the explorers on the ships going out to find new uncharted territory. So it was great to hear the conversations about equality and what open source um, coders should look like. I've been in IT for 15 years, and when I was first in startup camps, even when I was first working in it, the amount of like, harassment that I had as a woman or the expectations that I wasn't um, good enough to be in that space, but the fact that it's being spoken about so much now, I think is really um, exciting for, for me and for other women and other diverse, um, for the diversity of the spaces. But also the, the wisdom that's coming from that. A lot of the, um, you know, in, in Sydney, the FinTech community is really starting to take off. It's the financial technology community. And um, all, all the entrepreneurs have realized how much of a massive opportunity it is but a lot of the solutions that are being provided um, or created are solutions to entrepreneurs that are working in that space. They're not able to see or haven't created the um, opportunity to tap into this um, other wisdom or um, the other experiences of this diverse audience. That's the opportunity that we have from diversity and from this equality. Um, something that's really been driving me uh, in the last couple of years is about meaningful participation. I know that that's why I was asked to come over and speak here. And, um, you know, individual empowerment as, it's, as itself. We as um, in this room are all individually empowered, but the fact that it's empowering um, people in uh, Africa and um, America as far as um, the maker community, as far as education, it's a big opportunity. Um, the, the, the flip side to that and the negative side is um, for terrorist cells to be able to take advantage of that. And, and obviously we saw that in Sydney with, um, with what happened last year. But I think there's enough good people in the world to, to take a stand for that and say that that's not on. Somebody here, I don't know if they're uh, still here, one of the speakers, Doug, Doug, Doug Fitzpatrick, was talking about self-management. So um, we... We, we have had um, hierarchical systems with um, somebody at the top and um, systems coming, coming down uh, to feed down all the um, ideas, but bureaucracy um, and the processes um, are, are slowed down sometimes because of that. But I'm starting to see, um, including Yemma, um, but in, in um, Doug's business, he talked about self-management and this space of you making the decisions yourself. You don't need to go to a manager to make the decision because you are the one on the front line who sees what the issues are, who sees what the opportunities are, who sees what the problems are and is able to solve them. And you have more wisdom than anybody else. And you don't, um, and in this system, you don't rely on somebody to tell you um, it's driven faster by doing that. So. Um, I want to talk about what you believe in. Um, I want you to think about what you believe in. I want you to be free. We are all free in this room to explore. We're in an open system. And um, I think just as far as perspectives, I have not seen as many sunsets as I have since Instagram and Facebook. There are so many pictures of it. But what it's made me do is look at sunsets in a, different, in a different way. I, I see the beauty of it. I wasn't looking up before. And uh, before I came here, I had somebody, um, I wanted to have a, a Maori phrase that I could really um, talk about what I think is happening in this new way of thinking, the changes that we're having because of our interconnectedness and what it's doing. So, kahuri te whakaro means to turn your way of thinking. And I think that everybody here is, is seeing differently. We need to remember that um, not everybody in, in government sees what we see and knows what we know. But this new way of thinking is where the opportunity lies. 
So, um, I'm, so uh, social era, um, the, the speed of change just mean that the rules are changing daily. They aren't set, which is a, is a totally different shift for how it's been. Um, the powerful organizations are the ones that are fast and fluid. They are the nimble ones. They aren't the big gorillas that have a, a strategy in their set. Um, there's new power coming because um, we, with, with uh, the gathering of people and the organization of so many people who have um, beliefs that they are able to channel. Um, government is, some governments in the world, including our own, is trying to control that. But it, there is, we talked about already, the shift in power. Quick question, who here has never visited this site? Is that, nobody's filming you, so it's okay. Uh, I, in, in Sydney, um, in Australia, par, online piracy is, um, they're, they're finally cracking down on it. And, but I think that this is a really good example of what happens when you try and close something when the rest of the world is, has moved on. Um, it is easier for you to access material on this site, and then it encourages a culture of just accessing it on this site. Um, I can see all of the material that's available all around the world. Um, Louis C.K., CK the um, comedian, just talks about the fact that we, we, we're doing it because we're locked out of paying for it. And, and this is um, just, I think, a really good example when we're looking at um, open source, open society, of what happens when we aren't um, resetting the rules and rewriting the rules. And I think we really need to redefine value. The fact that I can get a group of my friends to donate enough money for me to support my, my project shows that people believe in me and, and what I produce. And value is beyond just economic. There is other forms of value. It's about rewriting the rules now. So I'm, I'm skipping through because I think we're running out of time, but um, it, what's happening in GovHack and that this guy was able to create an app that was better than the 400K app that the state government had provided. He did it in a weekend. Um, and this is the number one app in Australia at the moment. Make a community um, is, uh, we, we've talked about it already, Bitcoin is exciting. Um, the Climate Council, the fact that we were able to, the government tried to get rid of it, um, and the community just self-organized a million dollars in a week to put the Climate Council in, and they're still running, functioning now. Um, this is exciting because, um, uh, we talked about this while I was here. Um, Spanish protesters, they're trying to stop people from protesting. So uh, the way that they got around it was creating holograms and people were encouraged from around the world to protest. So instead of being there physically, they circumnavigated the, the protest. You can't stop the protest. The protest is going to happen. We are on a big wave of change. And where and how you... Uh, surf that is up to you. You are all here today and over the last two days to get better at that, to get stronger, to know how to surf that wave, and that's an exciting opportunity. Don't be one of these guys. <laughs> Such a perfect photo, isn't it? Um, so just the final thing that we're going to do is you all have the blitz sheet that was given to you. I'm going to run it really quickly. Um, so bring that sheet of paper out. So um, what we're going to do is I want nine ideas or solutions. We're probably going to cut it down to about a minute. So I want you to think about your intentions leaving today. What ideas have you come up with of what you think is important for you to go and do in your world? Whether you're able to do that straight away, it doesn't matter. Don't think about it too much. Just whatever comes up and fill, fill up those nine circles. You have a minute to do it. So I just want you to choose your one to ten, um, your, your favorite ideas. Just pick your favorite, three favorite ideas. What are they? Put a number beside them. And once you've done that, I just want you to have a brief action plan of how you're going to do that. Whether you have um, all the tools to do that, straight away isn't the point. We're planting seeds here. What action can you take to make that ha those ideas happen? OK. 
Okay, so just quickly, I want you to tell your neighbor, what are you going to do when you leave here today to action these? Do we have that time for that? No, we don't. Okay, so we're just going to go. So what I wanted you to do is if you can go on to Lumio after this, I want to hear what these ideas are. So don't do it now, obviously. On, um, on Lumio, I'm on there. I've um, set up the, just ask for your ideas. I would just love to hear a couple because what we find when we do this is that what, what five people say is generally um, picking up what everybody's saying. So the final thing that I want to talk about just quickly is that when I got here, the biggest conversations I was having with everyone was how much better the coffee and the beer was here compared to Sydney. And I have to say, when I came here two years ago, I was on that street that smell, it has smelly carpet. What's it called again? Courtney Street. That is Courtney Place. That is what I experienced of Wellington. And I have to say, it wasn't that great. Um, but what I want to say about this is I think it's really relevant to the open source movement. If you don't know open source, you don't know the community, and you don't have the connections, you will not know the richness of this community. And showing people, taking them on a tour, taking them to the best places is the best way for this community and, and the opportunities of this space to continue to grow. So I know there's great history in this, and the other things that are great about these spaces is the connections that you have in these physical spaces and how that continues on. So that's what I want to leave you with. Thank you very much for having me, and here's to drinking.